In your health now, it is a skin condition that typically shows up after the age of 30, and we're talking about rosacea. Joining me now is Dr. Apple Bodemer, a dermatologist with UW Health. So what is rosacea if people don't know? It is an inflammatory condition of the skin that mm -hmm. primarily affects the central part of the face. Okay. And we do tend to see it show up around the age of 30. It's more common in people with fair skin, especially people who are of Celtic or Northern European descent. Okay, so what are the symptoms? How do we know that you know we might have rosacea? Yeah. There are four main subtypes of rosacea, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of overlap between the subtypes and their symptoms. So with erythematotelangiectatic rosacea, <laughs> that's very <laughs> impressive. That's wow. central facial redness that tends to persist. Mm -hmm. With papular pustular rosacea, it looks a lot like acne, but you won't see whiteheads and blackheads um, like you will see with typical acne. Okay. It tends to be more central face. Mm -hmm. um, with ocular rosacea, people will complain of a gritty feeling in their eye. They'll often come out and say it feels like there's sand underneath my eyelids. Okay. And then the least common um, is phimidus, which you'll see thickening of the facial tissues and okay. enlargement of some facial structures. Again, the nose is the most common place we see that, but forehead, chin, and cheeks, kind of that central facial area as uh, well. And so what are some of the triggers that can cause rosacea? Well, they're they can vary between each person. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really helpful for people to use symptom diaries to help kind of define, define what their mm -hmm. individual triggers are. Common triggers include UV radiation, spicy food, hot okay. drinks, caffeinated beverages, mm -hmm. alcohol, especially red wine, mm -hmm. um, windy conditions, uh, extreme changes in temperature, strong emotions, and ex exercise. So everybody with, will get red with exercise, but people with rosacea tend to stay red longer. Okay, and what, so why is it important that we understand and know the, the triggers for rosacea? Right, so the more time you spend flared, the mm -hmm. more persistent the condition becomes and the quicker it progresses. Okay. So if you can eliminate your triggers, and mm -hmm. with sometimes that's possible, and sometimes with exercise, I'm never gonna advise somebody not to exercise. You can try to use cool, cool um, washcloths okay. or cold water in a spray bottle to help minimize the redness and hot okay. feeling that you have. Okay, and flares, I mean, that's when you, when you actually can see it. You mm -hmm. mean it's, okay, so it's and flared up. Right, and yeah. a lot of times people with pre-rosacea will start off just they blush really easily and they stay mm -hmm. red really long. And the more that happens, those blood vessels get more dilated, they open up more, they're more likely to stay dilated. And over time, okay. that gives rise to that persistent facial redness that people with rosacea tend to have. Okay, now you bought a, brought a bunch of uh, sunscreens in here, so yes. why don't you tell us about that? We've got so, a little over a minute left. Okay, so sunscreen is really important because UV radiation is not only a trigger for flares, but it also really helps strongly promote this condition. So people with rosacea do need to use sunscreens. Now, their skin also tends to be much more sensitive to chemicals that we find in a lot of daily skincare products. Mm -hmm. so, so sunscreens often are, people come in and say, I want to use my sunscreen, but it really irritates my skin. You want to look for something with one of those physical blockers, so zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Okay. Um, sunscreens that are formulated for babies also tend to be better tolerated for people with sensitive skin. Okay. And you want to use something every day, even on cloudy days or snowy days, because we do get UV radiation exposure through the clouds and reflection off of snow and ice can be can be important sure as well. and of course this is the type of thing that uh, your regular doctor might refer you to a dermatologist for or can they also help or how yeah does it work? depends on how comfortable your primary mm -hmm. feels with managing this condition certainly trying to minimize your exposure to triggers and minimize your exposure to chemicals and personal care products can be helpful um, and then a lot there's a lot of prescription medications that can be useful so checking with your primary and mm -hmm. you know they can often get you started with something and if not they'll refer when they feel appropriate it's appropriate Dr. Apple Bodum or UW Health, thank you so much. And I'm really you. impressed. You must have really studied that one on the med school <laughs> exam. What's the name of that first subtype again? Erythmatotelangiectatic. <laughs> wow, see? That is impressive. All right, she, she got her degree. She worked hard for it. All right, well, if you have any other questions, or I'm sure you could talk to your doctor, call Dr. Bodemer's office and set up an appointment. We'll have a final check on traffic and weather right after this.